What's up guys? Today we're working on a 2020 Hyundai Palisade. We're doing the rear brake pads, rear rotors. This one does have the electronic parking brake. So we're going to walk through how to do this manually. So you have two options on these. You can either have a super expensive scanner like this one that has the electronic parking brake reset within it. Um, these are pricey. Most of you guys probably aren't going to have one of these at home, but I'm going to walk through how to do this manually in the back without a scanner. You just do it with basic DIY tools you probably have at home. You might have to buy a few. I'll show you what tools you're going to need. Super simple. Um, we're going to knock out these rear pads and rotors in about 20 minutes. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty easy process. I'm going to walk through how to do that. All right. So first thing we need to do is we're going to go over all the tools we're going to need. Your lugs are a 21. You're going to need your lock nut here. So I got my 21 millimeter socket with my impact. If you don't have an impact, you can use a four way. I'm going to go ahead and get these off. Got our lock nut. out of the way. Go ahead and get our wheel off. There we go. Roll that out of our way. Okay. Next thing we're gonna do is uh we're gonna get all of our tools together. So first thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need a 14 and that's to get your caliper caliper bolts out here. You got one down here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and get that off. First things first, before we do that, let me just go ahead and we're gonna unplug. This is the electronic parking brake unit right here. We're gonna just go ahead and unplug this. I'm gonna push in right here in the middle. Should pop right up. There we go. Okay, it's off. Just gonna put this out of the way for now. Got that. Go ahead and get our 14. Get this off. Okay. Got our 14s. Get them both loose. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and just pull our caliper off. Should slide right out of the way. We're going to set this up here. Check. So you can see that these uh, these brakes are grinding. You can see how chewed up this rotor is. This this outboard pad here is grinding pretty bad. So we're gonna go ahead and get our pads out of its bracket. Check. So you can see the face of that pad's pretty pretty much gone. And she's grooved up pretty bad. So we're replacing the rotors too, pads and rotors. We'll go ahead and get a our back pad off back here. Get it out of the way. We're gonna go ahead and get our hardware off because we're replacing that too. Okay. Uh, next thing we're gonna need to do is get these. Set this out of the way here. We're gonna need to get these caliper bracket bolts out. You got a 17 millimeter here, and you got another 17 millimeter down here. You use a wrench, ratchet, whatever you got, 17. Just kind of break them loose is what I do. You should just be able to get them out with your hand by that point. Check. Check, 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 check. Mm, there it is. All right, got it. So that's our bracket. We're gonna go ahead and set this to the side. 
Uh, let's pause for a minute. All right, I'm gonna show you all the tools you need to get for what you're gonna need to do this job. We went through a few things already. So you're gonna need your 21 millimeter, 21 millimeter for your lugs. You're gonna need a 14 millimeter for your caliper bolt. You're gonna need a 17 millimeter for your caliper bracket bolt. You're gonna need a ratchet or a wrench, whatever is your preference. You're gonna need some kind of flathead screwdriver or pry bar. You're gonna need a big hammer. You're gonna need a drill with a wire brush and or a hand wire brush. And you're also gonna need a drill bit because we're probably gonna have to drill out these Phillips head screws right here. You can see, I'm gonna try to get them out with a screwdriver. I usually don't fool around with them too long. Uh, it's easier just to drill them out. These screws are pointless. Once this car leaves the factory, they serve really no purpose. So drilling them out and not putting them back in is not an issue at all. So you're also going to need a, a clamp to push your piston in on your caliper. Uh, use C-channel vice grips. You can use a C-clamp, whatever you have available, whatever you prefer to use. You're going to need a T40 or a small flathead screwdriver to twist the mechanism inside of the, the parking brake inside the caliper. Twist that in. I'll show you how to do that here when we get to it. You are also going to need a 5 millimeter Allen head to get this electronic parking brake module, which is right here, to get that off of the back of the caliper. Um, I use my fancy power ratchet but you can use it you can do it by hand whatever's easier for you so i'm gonna go ahead and try to get these phillips head screws out with by hand all right look at that we got one let's see if the other one's going to be that kind to us like i said i don't fool around with these too long if they don't if they start to strip i just drill them out it's not worth it i do put them back in if i get them out if i have to drill them out i do not put them back in so that one we're gonna have to drill. Go ahead and get set up here. Get that out of there. Drill bit. So this I think is a quarter inch drill bit. Just gonna go nice and slow. Drill this right out of here. Once you get most of the way in there, you should just be able to come over, give us a love tap with your hammer, and it should break it off the rest of the way. You can see there's our old rotor. Even the back side, you can kind of see some heat spots where the pad was, so these rotors definitely need replaced. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and twist this out. It twists out by hand. You might need to get a pair of pliers just to get it out of there. This is the drilled off screw. If you have an extra one laying around and you want to replace it, by all means, it makes you feel better to do it, but they're really not necessary once this car leaves the factory. The only purpose is for them to, they hold the rotor up in place while this thing goes down the assembly line, and that way the rotor doesn't fall off while it's rolling down the assembly line. That's really the only purpose of them. Um, so, we got that, we're good. We're gonna go ahead and Get a rotor on. Our new rotor. Check. Like I said, if I get these out, I put them back in. What I do, do for the next guy. So I got my brake grease here. You're also gonna need this, I didn't mention it. This is Sil Glide. This is what's used to grease your caliper slide pins. This is the best thing to use that's not gonna dry out that rubber O-ring that's in the slide pin, Sil Glide. It's a silicone based grease. It's what I use for the slide pins. So I'm just gonna put a little dab of that on, on this screw. So next guy doesn't have to drill it out. Maybe it'll come right out like it did for me. Okay, check. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and get my 
It's my caliper bracket. Uh, so these are the slide pins like I was explaining to you. So we'll go ahead and grease those up while I got it here. Again, so glide. Just gonna take a little dab on my brush. I'm gonna pop these slide pins out like this. I'm gonna grease them up. If these are super dirty, clean them up. These are not super dirty. This car is pretty new. So I just like to re-grease them. It's good. So this little rubber O-ring right here, this is what I explained and this will dry out if you use a uh, non-silicone based uh, brake grease. Like the brake grease that comes with some of these pads or like the purple uh, Permatex grease, don't use that on these. It dries these out and it will cause them to get stuck. So use a silicone based grease. That's what I'm using here. It works best. It's what's recommended. Just gonna get a nice coat on it. Pop it back in there. What that does is keeps it keeps these slide pins greased, and keeps them moving freely like this. This is how they should be. Um, so the slide pins are good. Next thing I'm gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and get this caliper bracket cleaned up. If you don't have one of these wire wheels, you can just use a wire brush, do it by hand. But we're just basically gonna come through and clean it up, hit it, get all that dust and rust and stuff off of there. See, it's pretty clean. Check, got that good. We'll go ahead and get this mounted back up there. Grab our 17s, get them started by hand. Fingers. I'm gonna get them finger tight before I get my ratchet back there. Check. Get our ratchet. Get them nice and tight. Let's go on and move to over here to the electronic parking brake. So this is the electronic parking brake module right here. Essentially when you push the button in the car to put the parking brake on, this has a little motor inside here that spins a mechanism that's inside of here. It's like a little screw and that puts pressure outward, which pinches the pads together to apply the parking brake. But you can't just push this in like a normal caliper because that mechanism inside of there is like a screw. So it screws down inside of there and as the pads wear, it goes further and further down. So what you need to do to replace brake pads on this is A, like I showed you, you gotta have that fancy scanner to be able to put this into maintenance mode or brake service mode, which essentially retracts this all the way back. The screw that's inside of there, it pulls it all the way back up to factory position, which is up in here. Um, or you do it the manual way, which I'm about to show you how to do. So we're gonna pull this whole motor off of here and uh, we're gonna do this manually. So I'm gonna set it here. We're gonna get our five, five millimeter hex and we're gonna get, we're gonna need to get this screw out here and we're gonna need to get this one back out here. Check. set these to the side so this just pulls right off here it's like that and you're gonna know you're gonna notice that there's a rubber o-ring inside of here right here so don't lose that this sits down inside of here like this and it keeps water and moisture from getting inside of there uh, so don't lose that I'm just gonna go ahead and set this one back in like that um, so basically what we need to do now is find our tools there it is so I use the t40 Basically what we're gonna do, you see this, this line drive here, that's the screw that the, the parking brake motor spins on and it turns that to put pressure. So 
So we're basically going to pull this back to factory position. So it needs to go how we have the orientation now. I'm doing the driver's side. It needs to go clockwise. And you'll know you're going the right way if you don't feel any resistance. If you feel resistance and you see this piston start to push out, you need to stop because you're going the wrong way. You don't want to feel resistance and you don't want to push that piston out because you will do that if you're going the wrong way with it. So as you can see, I'm going clockwise. And I'm just going to turn this all the way until it comes to a dead stop. Getting there, there it is. See, it comes, it came to a dead stop, like it won't go any further. So it's pulled all the way back up into here. So now what we need to do is go ahead and you can get your your C channel vice grips or your C clamp, whatever you're using. And this is just going to go in like a normal caliper now. You see it going straight in. Going all the way in with it. Okay, it's in. Now I'm going to come back. We're going to get our, our motor put back on because this is good. Again, double check that your O ring's there. And you might have to twist this a little bit to get it to fall back into place. That one fell right into place. We're going to go ahead and get our screws here. Got it, it's going there. Sir. Sir. So we're gonna go ahead and get these screwed back in. So we got both our bolts in now. So that's good, the caliper is golden. Sorry, I had to pause for a minute there. Somebody was trying to talk to me. All right, <clears throat> All right. so we're good there. We got our rotor on, we got our caliper bracket on, our slides are greased, our caliper is is ready to be reinstalled once we get the pads in. So let's go ahead and get our new pads installed with our new hardware. So here's our hardware. And you'll notice that these, uh, this one has these uh, spreader springs with it. So we do need to put those back in. So let's go ahead and get our hardware back on. Check. Check. So you also need to come in with your, uh, I'll just use my Phillips head, and you can kind of see how that, this is not like falling into place. So you might need to pry it down in there like that to make sure that this hardware is in how it should be. So that's good. Uh, brake pads with the wear indicator always go in the back. So typically you want these on the leading edge of the pad. So. If the caliper bracket on the rear is on the back, you want these facing down because that's going to be on the leading edge because the wheel's spinning this way. So you want it to catch that leading edge. If the caliper bracket was on the front, the wheel's spinning this way, you're going to want the wear indicator on that leading edge. So this one, we're going to put it on the bottom. It's going to slide into place. This is our outboard pad. Again, this outboard pad doesn't have the wear indicator on it. Check. So now this gets a little tricky. You're gonna need to use both hands. Get these spreader springs on. They just go right in the hole here. You're gonna have to keep these pinched together, otherwise they're just gonna fly out on you. They just go into place there. There, check. Now we're gonna pull our caliper over here with our under other hand. We're gonna try to attempt to get this into place without everything falling apart. This is where it gets tricky. Okay, I slide it up like that. I push this out of our way. Is she gonna cooperate? There she goes. All right, perfect. Fell right into place. Just how I planned it. All right, next thing we need to do, we got everything in place. We're going to go ahead and get our 14 mils back in to the caliper. Check.
under 14 millimeter here somewhere. There it is. Check. Top one's tight. Bottom one's tight. Okay. We're going to go ahead and plug our parking brake back in. Snapped right into place. Um, now we're good. We just need to get our wheel back on. Always get your lug nut started finger tight if you're using an impact. Unless you like stripping studs out and running into a whole nightmare. Battery. Check. that's it she's good she's done so um, what I'm gonna do now is I am going to let it down off the jack I'm gonna get in the car I'm gonna start it I'm gonna pump the brake up I'm gonna test the electronic parking brake I'm gonna run it through a few cycles I'm gonna engage it I'm gonna disengage it uh, make sure everything's working how it should then I'm gonna test drive it and then that's it that's that's all she wrote so like I said pretty simple 20 minutes uh, it's a it's not a complicated job it's just a little bit of extra step getting that out if for some reason you get a warning light or something on the dash come back in make sure you got your parking brake module plugged in uh, make sure your wiring's good all that um, here we'll go ahead and start this one up just to show you that it works and turn my scanner off. Go ahead and get in here and start her up. Okay. I'll pump up the brakes. It's got a good pedal. I'm gonna come over here. There's the electronic parking brake. Engaged. See the park brake lights on. You can hear it in the back. Disengage. Engaged. Disengaged. Pedal feels good. She's good to go. That's it. Catch you guys on the next one. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I post a lot of these videos on different cars. Uh, you got any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments. I'll get back with you. Other than that, you guys take care. Peace.